in the church we should look at every single individual it's not how thick their wallet is it's whether their heart is with Christ or not and and that's the person I want to hang out with that's what Christ has called me to be one with hey guys welcome to the Jesus King podcast hopefully you're doing well Uh, today we also have Abraham and Ivan, it's great to have all three of us here together. Uh, we really miss Emil. Emil, we miss you if you're watching. Um, oh, and he's we in Japan? No, he's back. Oh, he's back. So he's, hopefully he's going to be back on the next episode. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a blessing. Because uh, we really miss you, man. And we're losing our viewers because you're not in them. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just joking. Um, today we're actually speaking about wealth mm. and the Bible. Um, what's the Christian perspective on wealth, how we should have a healthy perspective, Yeah. right? Um, what is little too little, much too much kind of thing, if there is any of that. Um, is is having some money in your bank account makes you makes money your God? Um, how, how does how can we navigate with, with all that? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we obviously are in the age of a new covenant as Christians. And in the New Testament, we see um, Jesus and his disciples and the early church have a certain lifestyle, yeah. right? And there are some commandments to the poor. There are some commandments to the rich. And we want to explore that today, mm -hmm. right? So where do you guys want to start? Um, I, I'd like to start on our distortion of wealth like in the western world in the modern world um it's become it's become i say fairly fairly narcissistic fairly selfish at the moment like we are very individualistic in our culture it's about you and yourself and establishing yourself and kind of sustaining yourself and building wealth up right mm -hmm. for yourself for the future and not necessarily to say that there's no wisdom in that there can be um, but it does take away your responsibility for those that are in your center of influence, your family, um, and also for the local church and ministry as well. I mean, so where where does that play a factor? Because we've been speaking about, you know, the book of Acts, for example, where people are just selling properties, laying at the feet of the, the disciples to distribute to those who were poor. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not... Socialism is not communism, right? That's literally the church being the church and helping those who are poor. So these rich people, they're not putting themselves at poverty level. They're just selling properties that they have so that those who are poor can have food on their table kind of thing and to distribute that. Um, and so there is a very big difference between foolishness, right, and doing the thing that Christ has called you to do to help those who are poor, And then on the other side, so you have the pendulum, you have foolishness where it's like, I empty my bank account, I lived in destitution and poverty. And then on the other side of it, it's just like complete greed. And in the middle, you have being led by the Spirit, who when you're generous, God is going to bless you so that you can be more generous and so that you can actually go out and help those who, who um, you know, God loves and God actually has a heart for. So when God gives the command and he says, In, in the book of James, pure and undefiled, undefiled religion is to what? Is to care for the widows and mm -hmm. the orphans, right? And these are the people who are in the most vulnerable of situations. Um, they're at poverty level. And so it's our calling to be like, well, that's the heart of God. It should be our heart as well. Mm -hmm. And so if we do have wealth, if we have excess wealth, then that's where our heart should be. It should be to help those, you know, people in those vulnerable situations. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way I see it, uh, there's different views in the church. So you've got the prosperity view, mm -hmm. where if you're poor, you're not you're poor because you're disobedient to God. Yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. is what they say. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that can be quite toxic in the sense that it's very selfish. It it leads you to only want to do things to gain things, materials for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and then there's the complete other other side, you know, people commit plebiscite and, you know, they just 
like you were saying, what you'd say the foolish side of it is, you know, they have nothing and then they go, just go out. Now, I don't think that's the actual level we should be looking at it. I think there's, we, we need to look at a different dimension as, as spiritually in what does God want for you? Mm. I can't say that it's, you should be rich or you shouldn't be rich or you should be poor or you shouldn't be poor. You could be the poorest person in the world and still living in accordance to how God of wants course, you yeah, to yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think that's important because sometimes we spiritualize money, mm-hmm. right? As you said, if you're not rich, you're somehow disobedient to God or or something is wrong with your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. What you're doing here is you're connecting money up to a spiritual level where God is and who God is. You're, you're kind of putting it in a line with God, right? Mm-hmm. If God is happy with you, you're wealthy. If God is not happy with you, you're poor. And that's not the connection that we want to have as Christians to put between money and God. Well, that's, In the, fact, sorry, that's the idea the disciples had as well. Yeah. That so, those who were rich had favor with God and actually could, in a way, earn their favor. Yeah. So, so what Jesus does, he goes the opposite. He's saying, which God are you going to serve? Mm-hmm. So he's not aligning them. He's putting them on the opposite side. And the reason he's op- op- putting them on the opposite side, it's not because money is evil, right? It's the desire of money is evil. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it a God. A desire to live for God is good. So therefore, they become opposite. To desire to live a godly life, your money is not evil. To desire money, that's when money becomes evil. Yeah. And I think that's something very important as Christians. When you look at First Timothy chapter 6, Paul said, don't desire to become wealthy because through that desire, you're going to go through many trials, yeah. many temptations. So the, the idea now people say, well, isn't that circular reasoning, right? Oh, you could be poor, uh, rich as a Christian, but here you're saying a desire to be wealthy is ungodly. Well, the point is, the wealth that a Christian acquires comes from God. Mm-hmm. Abraham became so wealthy because God blessed him. Mm-hmm. What First Timothy chapter 6 is speaking about the person not being content mm-hmm. with what he already has. Yeah. Therefore, what God has already given him, right? Because if you go to Timothy chapter 6 verse 6, it says, Godliness mm-hmm. with content is a great gain. So therefore, if we are content with what God has given us, whether it's little or whether it's plenty, we are pleasing God. If we're no longer content with what God has given us, and that doesn't only apply with those who have little, because you could be very rich and not be content. That's right. So the power of not being content is not for the poor. Yeah. It's for both, the rich and the poor. It's a, it's a spiritual condition. Mm-hmm. It's not what you have in your bank account because someone who's not content and and you guys would agree with this. I'm I'm guessing that you could say, once I get to a million dollars, then I will be content. Guess what? That person will hit a million dollars and they're not going to be content. We're like, oh, I thought that was enough. Their now I'm going to go because, for that because ten million. As the million dollar raises, their lifestyle lifestyle raises raises too. as well. Yeah, so I think the idea is that <clears throat> we we don't put money to be with God yeah. or against God. It's the desire. It's the heart of the Christian. If the money is your desire, then it becomes against God because it's contending with the place of God in your life. Yeah. But if God is your desire, whatever comes your way and you're content with it, mm-hmm. it's a great game. Yeah. One thing we need to look at is I think now as a Christian country, you know, we're desensitized to how Christianity has impacted the world. Mm-hmm. We see a lot of things that uh, we see as normal, you know, free healthcare. Oh. They were actually very extreme views. Just like we're seeing how we see that when the apostles sold their properties, that was like an extreme view. A lot of what Christians did was very extreme at yep. that time because mm-hmm. it was, like I said, very narcissistic. Mm-hmm. And that is really, you, you can still see it in people in this world. Uh, they penny pinch everywhere so that um, 
when they get married, they've got all these Mercedes Benz lined up, yeah. and and yeah. and it's a very, it's almost like they're working to show other people what they have, yeah. and and it's quite sickening. It, it is the most depraved mm-hmm. level, yeah. Uh, yeah. and. Uh, you know, we're desensitized to Christianity and what it's done and the extremes. We think it's normal yeah. now. But... And, and one of the contributing factors to that and one of the motivating factors is, and they may not want to admit it, but it's pride and ego. Oh, yeah. Because they, they're like, well, I've made it. And I want to show the world that I've made it. Mm. And so when you're living a Christian life where it's like, well, may Christ increase and I decrease, you can't have that mentality. Mm. It's impossible. Now, we look in Christian history, John Wesley was a very wealthy man, but he died with like two coins in his pocket because he used everything. He opened up schools, hospitals, he he opened up seminaries, and he was just wildly generous. He gave everything away. And when he died, he wanted to make sure he died with nothing. He didn't want to take, he's like, I'm not taking it with me. And so if you have been blessed, and the majority of us in Australia, we look, compared to the rest of the world, we're blessed. Um... We have to look at, all right, God, here's what you have given me and you've been so generous. Um, give me the wisdom to use this for your kingdom. Yeah. How, how can I do this? Yeah. And, and we do need to have wisdom and discernment. I'm not, we're not going to let our family starve. Mm-hmm. That's our job. Our job as fathers is to provide for our children, of course. Yeah. Um, so we're not in the, that camp where we're like, oh, just be foolish. But we want to be like, God, teach us how we can use what we have in order to promote your kingdom and to to be about your business, yeah. not the business of the world. On on foolishness, and we uh, I think mentioned this before. Uh, we've got someone, Dave Ramsey, who's online. Okay, yeah, yeah. Dave I like Ram- I like a lot of his stuff. I'll be honest, I do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe you've got a few things to say, but there's there's one part of it which is uh, a faith part of it, mm. in that maybe you're doing something which is a bad business decision, a bad decision for your personal mm-hmm. wealth. Mm-hmm. Uh, a decision that Dave Ramsey would say that that's the wrong decision. Because it goes against business goes against logic. Build, yeah, business, business logic, worldly logic of it how goes to build against, business. Because his idea is how can we build wealth? We want to yeah. build wealth for our yeah. generations. But there are times when God calls you to do something mm-hmm. that is against building wealth. Mm -hmm. And ironically, I believe that when you take those steps, we're not doing it to do that, but when you do take those steps, God will bless you even more in a way that didn't make sense in the business world. Uh, I think when you look at that area, you know, and and Christians will come and they're like, let's build this wealth. and, And this is how the world operates. And this is how we can generate our wealth. When it comes to God, you're leaving the main person away from all this mm. which is god himself that's right yeah. so when you look at the book of acts right you spoke about in acts chapter 2 they heard the message they sold everything they put it in, at, at the apostles feet right moving forward from there you look at acts 5 you you look at the story about ananias and sapphira yeah mm. the greed they had greed they sold their land, but they kept some of the money back. Mm-hmm. Now, what did Peter say? He said, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Wasn't this your own land? Yeah. Yeah. And when you sold it, weren't that your own money? You're free to do with your what you want to do with your sure. money. But then when you look at another person there, opposite to what they have did, Barnabas. Mm. The Bible says that Barnabas sold his field and he gave away his yeah. money. Yeah. Now... The apostles didn't say sit there and said that was a bad financial decision you made there. Dave Ramsey would have. <laughs> he would well, have been like, what are you the, doing? Man? Well, that's that's the problem. Yeah. Is that the logic of the world yeah, is not going to gonna work it. in Christianity? Yeah. Why? It's because they're taking God away from us. Yeah, of course. The logic of the wor- world works because they work with what they have. Yeah, and it would make us, sense. It would make sense outside of. The building of the kingdom. Yeah. So if you're not in kingdom business, in Christ business, it makes sense. Yeah, all right. Save up as much as you can. Build your superannuation. Yeah. Build as much as savings as you can and go invest because you have nothing else in this world. You know and, I mean? and, and with Christians, you'll see, for example, um, j- just by having a weekly offering, hmm. right, that we put in church, 
that's a big wealth breaker, right? If you accumulate what you've given in the last 20 years as a Christian, for example, you'll be like, oh, that can be an easy deposit in a house. Example, right? But the idea is that we're we're not going to get wealthier if God's not going to bless. That's right. Because the more God gives is the more we give away. Mm -hmm. we, we have a heart that is a generous heart. Yeah. And I think... In, in this whole money, wealth, God topic, we really need to speak about the spirit of generosity there. Yeah. Just yeah. you reminded me there, but the point of idolatry, money being an idol mm. that you worship. Now, when you look at what idolatry actually means, it is, you know, they go to a, a statue or something to give, to get things that God should be giving. Mm. That is idolatry. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going somewhere else when you should be going to God for this sort of stuff. And what happens is, okay, if I have money, I've got health care, I've got safety, I've got food. Yeah. Uh, these are things that God gives, though. Mm -hmm. God's the one who keeps so it's you safe. illusion of security. It's, a, it's yeah. idolatry. It's going somewhere else yeah. to get the th these things when you should be going to Good God. Good point, yeah. 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 And I think that's where sometimes it makes or breaks the person who's called a Christian or is a Christian. Mm. That when God takes away everything from you, where where are you going to be now? Yeah. Those who have always trusted in the Lord, they're like, well, it came and it went away. Mm. That's okay. I've got God in my life. Those who call themselves Christians, but their God was their wealth, mm. right? When their wealth is gone, they grieve their God, mm -hmm. right? They're like, what is my life now? I've got nothing. And you know what? Even though they've served this God, the wealth, they go to the real God once they lose it and they complain. Mm -hmm. Why well, they was... ask for it back? <laughs> yeah. Why was all that taken away from me? Yeah. You're like, dude, because you've been worshipping it, yeah. Yeah. you know? So, so I think it's important because it kind of goes back to what we talked about in First uh, Timothy six mm -hmm. is that being content with what God has given you, yeah. mm -hmm. and having that content, that the attitude of being content, yeah. meaning that you're actually relying on God. Yeah. Because if if God's giving you a dollar today and you're content with it, not because that dollar is going to get you through, it's because you believe in the God who gives that, you a daily bread. Yeah, yeah. who's going to provide for you, and that's in the Lord's prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus literally taught his disciples how to pray. Yeah. Who is he calling to give the bread, today bread? He's calling the Father. Mm -hmm. Today, God, give us today our daily bread. Yeah. And even Jesus speaks about this. He's talking about this distribution, and he's saying it is God who makes the sun shine on both the just and the unjust, and the rain to fall on both the righteous and the unrighteous, right? And so even those who are wealthy, who are ungodly, that's one of the graces of God on them because he knows this is their part. Mm -hmm. This is all they have. And like, I remember when I was in Brazil, I had a member of the church and he's like, one day when I get to heaven, I think I've mentioned this before. Like, I'm going to ask God why he didn't let me, like, why wasn't I wealthy in this life? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, man, when you get to heaven, you're not going to ask that because you're just going to be in awe. But perhaps it's because God knows you can't handle that. Because the majority of us, the majority of people, we change, our hearts will change. Mm. The yeah, moment definitely. wealth becomes a reality in our life. And God knows that our hearts would be straight away. As Solomon's heart was straight away, mm. he had wealth, he had all the things that the heart could desire, and his heart straight. Right? And so one of the things that can happen is God will actually restrict that in our lives because he knows the moment that this will become a snare to you. The moment you have the millions and millions, you will fall away from me. You will turn away. Yeah, and, and secondly, even though if you want to go down the full poverty path mm. and, and you want to rely everything on God, but but a lot of times God says that his people will never lack. Yeah. His yeah. people, and it's kind of weird. We, we could go lower than that, but, but God has kind of set a limit. Yeah. And he's saying, I'm never going to let you lack. Yeah. So, he, he's like our I, daily I think, provider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
it, it's crazy that you're saying it because that reminds me of the Israelites in the desert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If if God could feed a whole nation in a desert and none of them are working, they they don't have anything to work. They might be tending the sheep that they've taken, right, or whatever small thing yeah, that yeah. they have. But then God was providing for them. If God could provide for a whole nation in a desert, mm. could he not provide for us now yeah. as a family, right? Yeah. We're all fathers, we're all husbands, and that we know that this is our one of our main duties yeah. as as it, for our families. So could God not do it in our family? Exactly. Of course he can. He and, does. And that, yeah. yeah, and he always does. For me, I always look back. I'm like, God provide for me. When I was in the mission field, God provide for me. Right. When I was in ministry, God provide for me. I used to see people, I'm telling you now, they would spend so much money because mm-hmm. the car broke down. Yeah. Something happened in their house. So, some other thing happened. Yeah. And I think... Okay, I don't earn as much as them, but I don't have any of these problems because God is taking care of all of my problems. Mm. And that's the blessing, like, because sometimes you might look at your neighbor and, and obviously the Bible says does, don't cover. But if you look at your neighbor and you're like, man, he's making like twice as much as me. Yeah. Cool. That's a blessing for him. Mm. Don't, don't cover that. But Just, he's struggling. <laughs> oh, he might but be what struggling. What about inferiority? Yeah. Feeling inferior? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's an ego thing as well. Though. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, and that's crazy because we're starting to build classes mm. on wealth. Yeah. You've got the wealthy. You've got the middle class. Upper class. And and you've got the poor. But in Christ, there's none of that. Mm. It's crazy how we're using even money to separate each other. Mm. And the Bible says no. You're Christians, you're in the church, you're one body. Yeah. And that happened in the early church. Yeah. Imagine that the communion, the last thing you would want is to show a distinction between the rich and the poor. Mm-hmm. And the communion, people come, those who are wealthy, they come with plentiful, they yeah. even get drunk on the wine, First Corinthians 11, mm-hmm. right? And you've got the poor sitting there, they're like, well, we've got nothing, we got nothing, to, we've eat. Got nothing yeah. to eat. James chapter 2, it speaks about that you're putting the wealthy at the front and you're honoring them and you're telling that poor man to go back and saying, wait, Jesus died for that person. Yeah. In Christ, whether you're wealthy or whether you're poor, you're in the same class. Yeah, we're looking at physical <clears throat> wealth rather than the spiritual. Because yeah. these a lot of these poor people, I was watching a documentary yesterday about the church in Cambodia. Right, and Paul Washer has a ministry there, and he's doing some great things. And I tell you, spiritually speaking, these are people who probably have like twenty dollars to their name, Australian, and they're going up and down the rivers, evangelizing and preaching to all the the Buddhists around them. Mm-hmm. They're establishing churches, they're planting churches. Make their spiritual wealth, it it will be like infinitely greater than ours, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And those who are who have a higher upper class financial status here and and something to say because a lot of christians will be like that's not me i don't have i don't distinguish i don't have these classes in in my life Mm. right i believe all christians are same but if you're honest with yourself and i see this a lot of people do it without even realizing Mm. they're doing it is that when you go to church who are you hanging out with that's a good question to ask yourself Interesting. I, I'm I'm really curious. Are you, are you hanging out with the people uh, that benefit you? And, yeah. And yeah. Look, some people would go to church. They might have, for example, a personal yeah. business. Yeah. They want to connect with other people that have businesses, ouch, right? Ouch. That that's an example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, some people might have a nice, beautiful house. They're gonna invite those who have good-looking yeah. houses too, yeah. and they're gonna do parties in because, each other's houses. That's how that's how the rich operate in the world. They, they hang around with people within their stratosphere yeah. or higher so that they can promote that. Yeah. It, yeah. But in the church, we, we should look at every single individual. It's not how thick their wallet is. It's whether their heart is with Christ or not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the person I want to hang out with. That's what Christ has called me to be one with. Mm-hmm. right? So I know Christians, you're not going to be like, I'm an upper class Therefore, I'm just going to hang out with the upper class people in my church. Yeah. No, you naturally do it without knowing it. So I would just encourage you, just break that. 
the what does what does Jesus say when when you make a feast? Mm. Invite the poor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the people that can't afford to yeah. invite you back. Yeah. Yeah. The people who can't afford you the meal that you're gonna point from. You may never get a cent back from that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll never get a cent. You'll never get a dollar back from them. And they're the people that you are to lavish upon. Yeah. And and didn't um, Matthew, the tax collector, do? Mm -hmm. When he repented, when he came to Christ, what did he do? He straight away invited everybody. Yeah. And he gave away. And he says, if I ever wronged anyone, I'm going to give them four times more back. Uh, Zacchaeus. Oh, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the question is, though, uh, we're talking about all of this, but is there a place for a wealthy person of course, in yeah. Christ? Yeah, this and is what, what is their place? What is their role? Yeah. Um, we we know some Christian businessmen that they're multi-billionaires, probably up to uh, even getting close to the billion. These are people who are actually helping to fund and sustain millions of mission mm. works all around the world. So there is definitely a place. God, I believe like because God has abundantly blessed them yeah. for that calling yeah. to go and support. They're like, well, I don't have the know-how and I don't have the spiritual gift to go out and preach and to start churches and to plant this and that. But I'm going to find the people that are called to that. Yeah. You know? The, the yeah. way I see it, generosity is really the the key identifier yeah. for these yeah. for the rich people of course yeah, yeah. yeah it's as he said like each one has a role in the church if you look at first timothy chapter six which i was sharing be content don't desire wealth um later on he's saying i command those who are rich in this world yeah. to be generous with their wealth yeah. Yeah. and and in doing so they are seeking spiritual treasures they are seeking eternal treasures mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, Paul is commanding the Corinthian church, which was wealthy, to start gathering some money to send to the church in who was in Jerusalem, right? And in return, the church of Jerusalem would pray for the Corinthian yeah, church. Yeah. So each one was sharing their own wealth. Yeah, yeah. Those who were capable to share financial wealth did and those in return, they shared spiritual wealth. Mm. They were praying for those people. God bless them more. They are blessing us. God help them. God guide them. Mm. God enrich them because they are blessing us and, and so on. So I believe that it's not, poor, uh, uh, what's it called, rich person is bad. Or the other side, poor person is bad. Mm. No, both are in Christ. But it's what they do with what they have. Is what's important. It comes down, and to that's that, what yeah. the Bible emphasizes on. It comes down to the motivation, of the heart. Like you were saying earlier, it's like you have, you have the intention behind what you have. Yeah. So if I'm a multimillionaire, which you know, God, if you want to, <laughs> if if I'm a multimillionaire here, what am I doing? Where's my heart? Where your heart is, there will be your treasure. Mm, right. That's right. Oh, sorry, yeah. Where your treasure is, there you know your heart. Right. So if my heart is anchored in my wealth. Mm -hmm. I will never do a thing for God. I might do the bare minimum, right? Maybe I'll just give my 10%, but that's it. Be socially accepted in yeah, the church. Yeah, Like, I'll do things just, you know, for performance mm -hmm. and for the face of it, but my heart is really far from God here. Mm -hmm. But if my heart is in the kingdom of God, and that's where my treasure is, and I'm all out, if I'm a millionaire, multimillionaire, whatever... I know that the millions I have have come from God and I'm using it, you know, I think and I know God will sustain. And if he wants me to continue, you, you know, that attitude turns a person from being an earner of his wealth into being a steward. Exactly. Exactly. God, yeah. you put this in my responsibility. Okay. What do you want me to use it for? Yeah. That's being a steward. But when God gives and say, God, you've got no say in it because it's mine. Yeah. And if you go to, to my bank account, it's under my name. So I dictate what I want to do with it. That's the difference. Well, like I said, speaking about that. So I was listening to the Ramsey and he did get a caller from a man. And the man said, look, I'm a father. I have no debt, so I don't owe anything. And that's one of the things. Dave Ramsey is very against debt and taking out loans and that kind of thing. So there's some wisdom there. Um, but he's like, look, I don't have any debt. Um, I have three kids. I have 20,000 saved up. But I feel God's calling me to ministry, full-time ministry, where I may not really earn 
much. Maybe I will be on 200, 300 a week, but I want to be doing the work of God. And before even thinking about, you know, the faith aspect, Ramsey's like, don't do it. Don't do it. That's not God. Mm. Right? And you're like, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, how do you know it's not God? Mm. Do you know what mm. I mean? He's just looking at the finances. He's looking at 20,000, three kids, yeah. 200 bucks a week. No, don't do it. Bad business decision. Well, if you want a spiritual advice, you don't get to a financial advice. Exactly. Yeah. So this right. is... So yeah. It's like, come on. Um, sorry, guys. I know you have a lot yeah, to speak about, about this. Okay. Any final thoughts? You just want to share something small? If not, we can just close it up. To, to me, it's just let God lead you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if you're following God and if he makes you wealthy, there's a reason for that. And And... We do have to take a step of faith. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but we need to be sure as well that it's God. Yeah. You don't want to take this extreme uh, poverty and it's not. And it, but if you do, God will catch you mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, if your heart's for God, Listen you're always learned. safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd rather err on the side of faith. You'd rather make the mistake of going too much in faith with God yeah. than on the other. Right. And yeah. where you're, you're, you're finding security in the things of the world. Yeah. I've yeah. always found that because even when I've made my mistakes and I have, especially on the mission field, God always caught me, you know, yeah. and I'm like, you know, what? I have this last thousand, I'm just going to give it away. Maybe it was a foolish decision, but I tell you, I never lacked bread mm-hmm. and I never lacked a thing. And God always provided. And you're like, well, was it out of emotion or was it actually faith? God had me, and I know I was, tr- like, the intent of the heart was to do the work of God. Yeah. And so if the intent of your heart is to do the work of God, whether you're wealthy or whether you're just getting by and you have your daily bread met, you know God is in it, right? Yeah. Live for the kingdom, and God will add everything else. Yeah. My encouragement, which if you actually do, it's going to take you a very long time to do, is look at the lifestyle of Jesus in the Gospels. Look at the lifestyle of the first church, first century church in the book of Acts, and look at the teachings of the apostles about money and wealth Mm. in the letters of Paul, Peter, John, and so on. And from there, you can make your own decision. You don't need to listen to a financial advisor, and maybe you're not even content with what you've heard here. You might be like, oh, no, these guys have no idea what they're talking about. Mm. Cool. Go back to, to the Bible. We mentioned... First Timothy chapter six, we spoke about what Jesus speaking about the the money, money and God being two opposite, mm. right? You can only serve one. We spoke about having a heavenly treasure, which Jesus also speaks about, and where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. These are all from the Bible. We're we're not here to say if you have a hundred dollars in your bank account, this is what you can do with it. We're not giving you financial advice. We're just giving you a biblical advice. Mm. And notice when people sold everything that they had and gave it to the apostles, the apostles never said that was a bad financial advice. Mm. Just just an observation. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take care.